Hey everyone, thank y'all for joining us for our Beef Brunch news update for Tuesday, November 1st. Uh, it's kind of crazy to me, I guess, to say that it's already November. I feel it after being at State Fair for a little bit, and I know we're getting there, but it is also weird to, to go ahead and write that date out. But I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Vince for our update for Central and South Louisiana. Well, thank you for having having me today, Ashley and Jason. Um, man, it's it's weather scenario. It's it's still dry in in South Louisiana, Central and South Louisiana. Uh, we've had a, a few cool fronts pass over the last 10, 12 days. Uh, we had I think uh, two tents, and then areas with uh, up to a half inch on this last one uh, Saturday when we woke up Saturday morning it was raining. Uh, which um, I walked out into some of my ryegrass fields this morning and we see in some germination. So um, hopefully it's not too little, too late or, or too little to just germinate it and uh, keep it going along. But we did have a heavy, dense fog this morning that uh, will support it, you know, to come on and go. Uh, but, you know, we, we do have a, another forecast of rain coming towards the weekend. So hopefully we can get some of that. Uh, the big question, you know, we still have people haven't planted yet, you know, with the fear of not getting any kind of, soil moisture it's it, it truly is powder house dry uh, uh it's uh you know it, the the you know we we say this time and time again the cost of seed and fertilizer and then the questions are starting to, to arise is how can i supplement my cattle you know the cheapest um the cheapest source of protein uh to keep them maintained uh weather forecast i looked at some of that today it looks like november is going to be warmer than than average uh, for Louisiana, uh, so that may uh, may be a blessing in disguise that um, you know hay in some some type of supplement tub or a pound two pounds of cubes a day per cow is is going to help them get along. Um, and some people are asking the magic you know trying to ask the magic question: Can I just put my ryegrass seed out there and um, and, and let it come on us? And my answer to that is: Yeah, you probably could, and and nature seems to take care of things, but um, Hopefully, you know, we get that one good rain that makes the soil moisture meet and, and we, you know, we can go on and conduct business as normal. Um, calf market, you know, has fallen over the last six weeks or so uh, here locally, uh, but it's still a, a, a fair price. Uh, and I'll say it, as I've said before, you know, the good cattle are going to bring better prices than the, than the not so good cattle. Uh, so good calves, you know, the, the runs have, have been big uh, here at some of the local barns in Opelousas and Kinder. Um, with, you know, with cattle, cattle numbers uh, ranging well over 11, 1200, even for Opelousas, that's a, that's a big number. Uh, Kinder had, had several, several weeks at around 2000, you know, slightly under and over right around 2000. So, um, those numbers, I think there's still some sellouts going on. So there's, there's a lot of, a lot of downward push, I guess, in, in the, uh, positive area of, you know, trying to do business. So, uh, with a lot of uncertainty uh so those those who have grass and who, who can sustain it uh moving forward um it's it's not real not really encouraging at this point in time uh just because there's nothing nothing real positive moving forward and you know that had one comment this morning from a producer asked him if he had planted any ryegrass yet he said no he said i'm waiting waiting to get some soil moisture no-till some seed and uh to try to save on some of that soil bed prep you know and is we're you know as Ashley mentioned we're November the first you know so uh, with our our days our growing days are getting shorter um, so uh, you know the the fact that our forecast is to be warmer than than average uh, that might be a blessing in disguise again that we can get some growth out of some ryegrass provided we get that soil moisture so um, you know people are, are you know going to bull sales there's a lot of bull sales going on right now uh, replacing bulls palpating cows. Uh, still clearing out herds of non-productive cows, so hopefully we can. Uh, it, it's moving forward that we don't we don't see too many more negative impacts uh, on the cow herd in general. So um, it's just kind of kind of mundane, so to speak, and waiting to see what happens. But there has been a lot of sellouts here on older older producers, smaller herds that just just can't justify the expenses of doing business. Um, so time time is going to be very critical moving forward. That's about all I have. I mean, it's just we just kind of it's kind of a wait and see game, and and what what direction we take as far as uh, you know having having some forage, some winter forage, and 
um, how do we supplement moving forward? Because cost of liquid feed and tubs has gotten astronomically high, and you just it's hard to justify a hundred twenty dollar uh, you know protein tub. Thank you, sir. Uh, and as y'all can see, Lee's not on with us today. He is over at the state fair, still working at that livestock show, and and couldn't step away, which we completely understand. So I asked him for um, any cliff notes of an update that he wanted to give and essentially just kind of echo what Vince just said. You know, we are getting some some moisture in the northwest region. Um, some people already planted some of their cool season forages. Some of those are starting to germinate and pop up um, and some people are still planting. So as Vince mentioned, just hoping we get the moisture moving forward and we're able to get the winter forages that that we, that we are used to, um, or at least something to be able to hold us over through um, up through the spring. Jason, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you for the Northeast and for our markets, please. All right, thank you, ma'am. So uh, we were blessed at, uh, uh, across a, kind of a belt across North Louisiana, depending on where you were. Some folks uh, got a couple of inches of rain, uh, just all depending on where you were uh, underneath some of those heavier, heavier downpours. but uh, just about all across North Louisiana, some folks receive some amount of of measurable rainfall, which, uh, as Ben said, that's always the scare this time of year. You catch one of these cold fronts and you catch enough rain uh, to make everything germinate, but there's still uncertainty of drought going forward. And the last thing we want to see is that stuff, those cool seasons start germinating, but there's not enough moisture there to sustain that plant as it starts growing. That's that's always a fear this time of year. If it's not army worms getting into them, uh, it's uh, it's that they germinate. Uh, you get you get an initial plant growth, but there's just not enough moisture there to sustain that plant. So uh, hopefully we will be able to catch some more rainfall. We've got some in the forecast for the end of the week towards the weekend. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to uh, to catch some of that. Uh, slaughter volumes for this past week were 668,000 head. That's down 5,000 head from the previous week and flat with the same week last year. Uh, choice box beef closed out, uh, closed the week, uh, uh, still surprisingly, uh, $261.19. That's up $9.26. Uh, with a choice select spread of $31.60, that's up $1.59 from the previous week and still nine dollars and 88 cents higher than the five-year average for the same week so um and apparently uh, beef demand or is still really good uh so we're about to get into another seasonally high um uh, time of year for for box beef values just because of the uh, uh the thanksgiving and christmas holidays coming in uh, so that's typically a seasonally high period that we get into with some of those cho choice box beef values um and so we're i think the last time we reported i went back and looked we were like 16 dollars and some change higher than the five-year average so we're uh, we're still running uh higher than the five-year average but that uh that price spread's coming back down a little bit uh packers bought cattle that they could uh this past week at two to four dollar uh, higher prices um weekly sales were lighter than the previous week so that's good for us. So feeders continue to use tighter fed supplies and seasonally strong beef demand is leverage over the packers. So uh, anytime the feeders can can have some leverage uh, over those uh, over those packer buyers, um, that helps us in terms of those prices that we can get all the way down the chain from the feeder down to the cow calf producer. Uh, reported in the National Weekly Direct Slaughter Direct Slaughter Negotiated Purchase Report. Uh, they reported a confirmed 102,849 head. So again, you can look at that negotiated purchases uh, report. Anytime we can get uh, into the 100,000 head range on that negotiated purchases, that's good because uh, what that's telling us is, is there's not as many formula cattle out there for them to purchase. So that drives those packer buyers into the cash market, into the negotiated cash market. Uh, which is again, that's that's good for us uh, going backwards in the chain uh, from the feedlot. And the Southern Plains live purchases trading mostly three dollars higher at one hundred forty-eight dollars. And Nebraska live purchases trading mostly two to four dollars higher from one fifty to one fifty-two. 
And then the Western Corn Belt live purchases traded two dollars higher at one fifty, with a few up to one fifty three. Uh, live cattle futures market settlements in the front months ended the week with December down forty two cents at one hundred fifty three dollars, and February down fifty two cents at one hundred fifty six dollars and thirty two cents. Uh, so again, our um, our futures market uh, is struggling to uh, provide a good a good glimpse of what um, what those cattle are going to do in the future because we're trading right now at 153 and the futures market is showing settlements in December at 153. So we would assume that uh, that those those should be a little bit higher. Uh, hopefully that they'll the the futures market will start reflecting that in the next week or so. Uh, live cattle futures into the week down a dollar to steady when compared to the week open. Uh, five to six hundred pound steers, medium and large ones and twos, so between 162 and 174. So that's steady to eleven dollars higher when compared to the previous week. Um, so as we said, there was a, a good bit of the south and southeast that caught some much needed rainfall. Uh, but the wild card still remaining out there is how much growth we're going to get on those uh, those cool season forages before winter really sets in on us. Uh, so timing is critical whenever we're talking about the growth stage of those winter pastures and whenever those really cold temperatures start setting in on us. So I think the the much needed rainfall drove some of those calf prices up a little bit uh, as we compare them to the previous week. Uh, but there's still a lot of a lot of wild card out there in order for that, I think, for in order for that calf market to really establish itself. And continue to move higher. Uh, we're going to have to see what this this rainfall and these cool season forages do. Seven eight eight hundred pound feeder steers, medium and large ones and twos, sold between one thirty six and one sixty two. So that's seven to five dollars lower when compared to the previous week. Futures market settlements in the front months ended the week with November down twenty five cents at one seventy seven eighty seven, and January down seven cents at one eighty thirty seven. Uh, so feeder cattle futures end of the week generally two dollars lower when compared to the week open. As we look at our uh, cold cow market, uh, lean cold cows, those in thin condition end of the week up a penny at 62 cents a pound. Uh, those utilities, that's those in moderate condition end of the week up a penny at 68 cents a pound. And breakers, that's those in high body condition end of the week down two pennies at 68 cents a pound. Uh, looking at our uh, grains and our feedstuffs, uh, so if you have read any type of uh, agricultural uh, news source over the last several weeks, you have read something about the uh, low river levels in the Mississippi River. Uh, it is causing major, major issues in terms of grain transport. Uh, so you couple that along with what's still taking place in um, in Ukraine and Russia. Uh, so um, Russia had allowed some grain movements uh, to the UN and Turkey, uh, but this past weekend, so we're recording this on a Monday to release on a Tuesday this past weekend, Russia announced that they were no longer permitting grain movements to the Black Sea. Uh, so as a result of that, our grain markets took another jump. Uh, so whenever you couple that along with some major grain movement problems in the Mississippi River, so if you're unfamiliar with that, um, a large portion of the grains that are uh, produced in the United States and the, the Corn Belt and the Midwest move down the Mississippi River. Um, and when anytime we get transportation issues, uh, that's a problem in the grain market. So the reason the river levels are so far so low um is because of the mississippi river uh, flood or the uh, uh the watershed for the mississippi river so that's about uh bench you might correct me wrong but i believe that's like 45 percent of the upper united states flows into the mississippi river um and if you look at the u.s drought monitor a big portion of that 45 percent is under some sort of drought uh, so all of those tributaries that flow into the Mississippi River are not uh, not providing um, that uh, that that water into the river like uh, like we're 
like we need it to be. So this is a time of year that we normally see the river low, uh, but we're getting into some historically low river levels right now. Uh, I was reading a news report that actually you can walk underneath the USS Kid in Baton Rouge right now uh, on dry land. Uh, and that's, uh, uh, that's, that's some, that's just, I, I, I kind of wish I could go down there and see it just so I could say that I saw it, but, uh, just to, just to picture that in my mind is, is unbelievable. Yeah. So, I've, I've talked go ahead, to some, go ahead, Vince. I've talked to some, you know, local truckers that are working through some of the, um, the elevator facilities up and down the river, and they've actually started moving grain by truck to, uh, feel some of that demand, um, you know, to keep barge traffic moving. And I can't say for sure, but they have a direction either upriver at, in, in the AM hours and downriver in the PM hours, uh, depending on which point of access that they get into the river. So it's, it's restricted, you know, in that respect that they're only moving up and down at certain hours of the 24 hour day. And so the problem with moving, like Vince said, is when you start moving by truck, it just increases the cost of movement. So we can move so much grain by barge um, whenever you can only put 48,000 pounds on a truck. So, um, I mean, we can just, uh, it, it becomes an, an, an efficiency uh, problem and it just drives the, drives the cost up uh, further down the line. So looking at our feedstuff prices, soybean meal is up $6.50 at $460.40 a ton. Uh, and I guess I'll add that these are the prices ending October the 14th. So, um, and you can, you can look at what prices are going to do over this coming week with the announcement in Russia, but I would assume some of these are going to start ticking back up again. Uh, soybean hulls are steady at $180 a ton. Rice brand steady at $190 a ton. Uh, again, if you can find it, uh, rice brand's pretty hard to find out there right now still. Uh, Cottonseed meal down $17.50 at $432.50. Whole cottonseed down $10 at $400 a ton. Corn gluten feed meal down $5 at $780 a ton. DDGs are up $0.50 cents a, a ton at $283 a ton. And corn is up 11 cents a bushel at $601 a bushel. And that's all I've got, Ashley. Okay, thank you. Um, and to wrap up for the events coming up next week on Tuesday, November 8th, will be our monthly webinar. Uh, we'll have Bobby Bingham, who's one of our agents in the Southeast region. He will discuss grazing ryegrass and winter supplementation, which, as we have discussed today, is going to be pretty Pretty critical um, moving forward this year, especially. Then, as a note, and I'll repeat this probably on the upcoming news updates, but your monthly webinar for December, January, and February, uh, we will post those, but they will just be recorded and posted on the days that they need to launch. So they will not be live. Um, so you'll still get that content. I know the vast majority of you watch the recording of them anyways. Most most of the time you cannot get, get on live. Um, but we've got conference and then holidays and then the LSU State Livestock Show all coming December, January, February. So um, there were just scheduling conflicts and those sorts of things. But we still want to get that content to you. So you will have the recordings of those posted. And I'll have all of that on our Beef Brunch website, um, lsuagcenter.com slash Beef Brunch, if you're interested in those. And we'll give you the topics, too, as we start moving forward. With that, I think that's everything that we have for y'all today. Um, again, just hoping and praying for some more rain, um, bring us slowly out of this drought and get us the forages that we need moving forward for our winter grazing. We will be back with y'all in just a couple of weeks.